Woohoo. Happy life flow. ये मैं आपके बैंक अकाउंट में ट्रांसफर कर दूँ Hi, hi everyone. Can you guys see me? Can you guys hear me? एक बार प्लीज कंफर्म कर दीजिए. Okay. Hi Nandan, how are you? Hi Suprat Pande, Panda. Hi Harika. Hi. Okay, there are a lot of people here. It's just I, every time I go and stream on Melon by myself, and I'll move it here. Okay. I kind of mess up a little, so I really wow, well, <laughs> which is happening right now. <laughs> Vishnu said, "I'm just omnipresent." I think. Also, guys, please subscribe to Kitabi Cabins. Chal Chitra pe we've already hit hundred k, but Kitabi Cabins pe bhi let's aim for ten k, but. I'm a fan. Okay, yeah, Harika, thank you so much. Quite an entertaining stream it was. Yes, it was absolutely lovely. We did not imagine कि हम कर पाएंगे hit hundred k on the stream. I mean, हमने expect नहीं किया था, but it was really nice कि everyone, most of us were present when we hit hundred k, and everyone joined. I am offended by this title. This is what Bunny is saying. I'm offended by the title. I just finished reading four hundred page book, and I'm halfway through To Kill a Mockingbird. nice i actually wanted to sit down and have a conversation because i am not able to finish reading most of the books that i've picked up recently but there are a few books which have helped me make progress and i've come to this live stream with all five of them so yes hi mahima hi kayur should do an episode on main calm it's my favorite book oh what do you like about this book so much and then you have well okay this is nice i'm <laughs> hi hi shak how are you okay do a video on dealing with reading slump You know what, Harika? We've already done one episode on Chal Chitra talks, but none on Kitabi Cabins. Anything that's related to this, but uh, we've obviously linked the video in the on the main uh, on the home page of the video. So I think you'll be able to like it. अभी तक टेन के क्यों नहीं हुए? I mean, <laughs> यही तो स्ट्रगल है आशीष, यही तो स्ट्रगल है. Struggling with the same. I haven't been able to finish books this whole year except the Hugo one. Oh wow! Can I be honest? Like I really like a book a month, but every time I pick up a book in a book a month, I just somehow do not want to read it anymore. Loved before the coffee gets cold. Nice. So we might actually get Ruskin Bond either on this channel or on the other channel, but same year more or less. But we will have. Uh, Ruskin Bond on either of the channels super soon. Um, that's all I'm all out about. Like that's all I'm going to say. I do not want to jinx it. We're just figuring out dates when we can record the episode and everything. And let's hope that we're able to figure it out super soon. Stuck on the Earth spinner for about six months now. Nice. I mean, guys, yeah. Ruskin Bond has some social media presence also. Now you can just bombard their PR so that they can let us through sooner <laughs> and faster. But anyways, I just without wasting further time, um, I want to start with the first book. Now, um, the first book that I want to talk about is. Um the first book is this one Notes on Grief by Chimamanda Chimamanda Ngozi 
Nigo, I'm not sure how to pronounce this. I'm really sorry. But she's the woman who's written Americana. She's the woman who's written We Should All Be Feminists. And this that you see on the screen is a quote from her book. And uh, this is a book that I've, I made a separate video also, which might soon or, or later come out on the channel eventually on Kitabi Cabins. But this is a book that I've been recommending to everyone I know. And I usually talk a lot about grief. But one of the books, I mean, this is the book that is my most recent discovery in terms of grief. And I think all my recommendations are going to be incomplete without this one book. Also, it's a very short read. Um, it's 88 pages long. And that was like with um, extremely big, bold text. Now, uh, why I love this book is because so a little context about the book. Chimamanda wrote this book, Notes and Grief. Uh, these are actually her notes after her father passed away during COVID. So she couldn't fly out to Nigeria and uh, pay her last respect in time. They had to delay the funeral. Or so she wasn't there. She couldn't make it for at least a few months after her father passed away. And this is a collection of the notes that she must have written down in her diary. She recorded after her father passed away. And it is such a beautiful book that will it'll make you question how you have been there for people who have lost somebody who are experiencing grief and you will probably go back in time and judge yourself or perhaps realize what you could have done different and feel better and if you are someone who's lost somebody you will find roots in this book uh, your grief will probably relate to whatever she's talking about and Every book that I've read about grief tries to define it. But I think um, Notes on Grief has my favorite definition of all time. And it starts with grief is a cruel kind of education. And uh, it says grief is a cruel kind of education. This is what I kept in the book. Grief is a cruel kind of education. You learn how ungentle mourning can be, how full of anger. You learn how glib condolences can feel. You learn how much grief is about language, the failure of language and the grasping for language. Why are my sides sore and achy? It's from crying, I'm told. I did not know that we cry through our muscles. The pain is not surprising, but its physicality is. My tongue is unbearably bitter, as though I ate a loathed meal and forgot to clean my teeth. On my chest, a heavy, awful weight, and inside my body, a sensation of eternal dissolving. And it's just the way she's described her grief in the entire book. This would make you... You just can't keep the book down. Of course, um, given the length, 88 pages, that's a very short length of the book. But it feels so heavy, despite the length, because you find a place for yourself in this book, whether you've lost somebody or you haven't, because all of us have experienced grief in our own ways. And this is a book that I would recommend to everyone um, who, this is a book I would recommend to everyone who wants to learn more about grief or just wants a good cry. <laughs> And I think this book will offer that to you. Your 100K channel guy eavesdropping on 7K channel. <laughs> okay, is there? Oh, Weber is here. Weber is here. Hi, Weber. How are you? I think grief comes from... This is such a nice comment, Vaishnavi. I think grief comes from not just death in general. Any loss can be grieved, breakups, losing a job, etc. And anyone going through any loss should read a book on grief. And I absolutely agree. This is something that I've realized in the most recent times. And I would love to know your opinion on this, guys. Um, I believe that anybody, um, all of us experience grief, like Vaishnavi said. And it's just not when you lose somebody. It can happen any time, as a matter of fact. Um, And we don't, we are used to looking at grief through a lens of death. And that's why uh, sometimes we don't understand that, hey, this is a morning time for us. And uh, the truth is, like Vaishnavi said, 
everyone any loss can be grieved break up losing a job any fall that you've had any personal loss that you've had and uh, that's about it <laughs> discovered adishi through her speeches nice i yeah i discovered her through we should all be feminists because that was such a tempting cover and uh, since then i've come to really really like her writings i think they're very strong and bold the next book that i want to talk about is um okay this book that i have had for a really really long time uh and i keep on going back and forth with this but uh, i'm not sure why though uh <laughs> because i'm not able to finish this but i think i will be able to this time around because i realized it's such a good good book to have when you are struggling with finishing books and this book is hourglass and uh, it's by dani shapiro it's a memoir about her marriage and what i really like about this book is how everyone around us seems to be in a non permanent relationship of sorts especially when it comes to romantic relationships and marriages and uh, not everyone around us though i'm sorry about that but uh, this is a book where she talks about what actually is the thing or deal with marriage okay i'm going to address one comment uh, this one ashish it's important to read about grief when you're not grieving to get a perspective absolutely right um grief but also can be said about regrets okay <laughs> this this is nice I wanted to talk to this girl but I still regret that I did not confess my feelings to her like it's okay to get rejected but I need to Oh yeah I think that's true as well Mhm mm If you're talking about uh it would be good to also acknowledge her anti transness and her beef with I'm not sure I know about that I am a little but uh i like how everyone uh this is a book that a lot of people have recommended to me when breath becomes air um i haven't read this and uh, do i plan on picking it up yes i do but not really uh not any time soon because i think i've had my share of grief and i can't read any more grief like solid grief grief anymore and i know when Be breath becomes air is a beautiful book this is what i've heard from every one who's recommended this to me but i still feel like um it can wait for now because of every because uh so my story graph so all of you who use story graph um uh, story graph is an app like good reads but it gives you graphs and my story graph has shown the most emotion that i the emotion that i read about the most is grief so i'm putting it on break and uh, going back and trying some other emotions between grief and nothing i would choose grief wow this is nice Another book about grief is a book by an Indian called Loss by Siddhant Dhanvant Sanghvi. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I haven't read that one, but I recently came across is it Siddhant or is it Siddhant? Because I came across Siddhant Dhanvant Sanghvi Sanghvi's um The Rabbit and the Squirrel recently. And now this is a very funny book. I did not plan about talking um i did not plan that i would talk about this book but this is a very interesting book i picked up this book because i thought it's a children's book and i just want to i've been buying children's books left right and center i see a children's book i buy it uh 8 out of 10 times <laughs> but this is an adult book disguised as a children's book it's not a children's book written for adults i mean yeah it is that as well but 
This is a book about a squirrel and rabbit. The rabbit is not so well to do. Squirrel is from a I think upper middle class family and her parents are trying to get her married etc etc so it's it's a very I think the right audience for it will be uh, mid 20s to mid 30s but it is such a this book took me by surprise I wasn't expecting the content that I found in this book about um for lack of a better phrase cigarettes and alcohol and other things and i was like what and then i realized this is not a book that's written for children this is an adult book for adults but just disguised as a children's book and i wish someone would have warned me before i learned i had i read it uh okay i'm going through the content how should um adult books adult books disguised as children's book reminds me of a book called Go- oh <laughs> wow you know what i don't know but is this the book that you're talking about go the fuck to sleep it's a wonderful um not wonderful but a really nice book and uh, the first four lines go the cats nestle close to their kittens the lambs have lain down with the sheep you're cozy and warm in your bed my dear please go the fuck to sleep it's um it's a nice nice book i mean somehow i've been fortunate enough to come across these books and present them to you so um now i really do not want to cut short my train of thought but i want to talk about this book called hourglass which is about time memory and marriage i've always been fascinated by the idea of memory in general because i think you can play around memory a lot especially when the story is being narrated because i think even in our present day to day lives we go through a lot of uh, activities we go through a lot of moments where we tend to imagine or remember them a certain way that is very convenient for us but usually that's not the case and that's why any book that talks about memory or plays around with memory really interests me and our glass is a book like that and uh, but what is really beautiful about this book is the monotony of a relationship so we've usually but usually um okay sorry but uh this book is about the monotony of relationships when we enter a relationship it's usually very exciting and then once you get to know them you it kind of gets monotonous but i think that's the beauty of relationships and this has been completely proven in our glass and i just wanted to read out to you something which is about um okay so the i really want everyone to read this you might find it boring at places but then you can just move past it now um this is a book that uh, this is a line from what you see here no wait what do you see here this is special was that i had no exit strategy and this is a quote from the book and uh, before this the author is talking about the number of times she had gotten married and then get gotten divorced and her partner m had gotten married only once and uh, oh not married also but he only had one serious relationship which never turned into marriage so he had no wives she on the other hand had a lot of husbands before him so she always felt guilty and he always felt insecure because he thought he's just another husband um uh, but uh this is our glass by the way by rani shapiro and she writes this i did not know how to express to m that this us was different special had nothing to do with the slip dress slip dress by the belgian designer that i would wear 
that June. June was when they were getting married. <clears throat> Nor the flower bedecked Shupa draped with my father's talus. Special was not the prelude to something, something. But then she comes to this. Special about this marriage was that she had no exit strategy. Special was that I understood I was in it for life. Come what may, for better, for worse. And uh, this is something that I really liked about this book because sometimes you believe, and this is something I was thinking about yesterday also. My friend and I were having this conversation about relationships and how we, how the norms of relationships have changed a lot from the time when our parents got married to now when our friends are getting married. And uh, you've had a lot of partners before you finally enter the marriage. And even if you get divorced, you've had quite a few partners before your second marriage or third marriage. And how do you define that it is special? How do you define that this relationship now is special? And this is when I thought of this book and I went back to it and I realized, oh, this is not a very bad book. So if you're stuck somewhere where you cannot read and really want to read something that's very light, will make you, will offer you insight about your current relationships, not only about, not only romantic, but also platonic. I would recommend this book to you, which is Hourglass by Danny Shapiro. Here's the cover, and I think it's absolutely beautiful. And uh, yes. Okay, uh, he does do research for his books. I'm not sure who we're reading. But it's hard to cut off people. People say to cut off toxic is my second recommendation. Preeti Shanoi books are great sad that no one talks about. Uh, many people only talk about internationals. Is there any book that you can recommend us, Anthony? We'd love to read her works. Okay. I love the theme. I love the idea of storytelling and memory and a book that perfectly illustrated it was The Tiger Came Down the Mountain by Nigi Gibo. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Um, there's another book that plays very well with the idea of memory. And I think it's the one by Julian Barnes, The Sense of an Ending. And one of my most favorite writings is... Uh, one of my most favorite openings to a novel is from that book the sense of an ending where he's trying he's remembering a particular day after 20 30 years of its passing and later towards the end of the novel we realize it we realize that his memory fooled him it wasn't the way he had imagined it to be so that's one thing it's absolutely lovely there's another comment in the chats please guide me um on Robert Greene's books. So we did an episode recently about Robert Greene, which was actually very nice. If there is anybody who is in the comments from the team, could you please link the episode um, down below? Because I think we've, Weber and I have talked in depth about the particular author and also one of his books. And I think the main thing with Robert Greene is I think all his books are wonderful and amazing. Um, I've read couple of them and I think uh, you always have something to take away from them but um, if you take it on face value you could sway in either direction so just don't follow his advice blindly do some math in your head before you do that um, will I become arrogant if I read him I don't I don't think so it's entirely upon you how you see a lot of times uh, the consumption of art is not just about consuming it on face value you need to have a certain sense of being and a certain foundation in order to be able to grasp what the author means and whether you want to follow it blindly or not so that sort of maturity is something that comes with time and age and once and with experience so uh, for me, I would definitely recommend Robert Greene, but I wouldn't recommend it to everyone because sometimes, uh, take it with a, yeah, like Nichols said, a pinch of salt. I don't know if he said it for this, but um, 
take whatever he says not on face value just think about it before you start following his advice now um okay the next book that i want to talk about i'm going to put up the quote from the book and it's also a movie and therefore um in my experience uh this this has been the easiest read so far because why am i not able to read that is also another question we must answer but this is a book that has really helped me through it because it's also a movie and now i'm just reading the script of the movie and uh this is something my sibling actually gifted me on rakhi it's a screenplay for before sunrise and before sunset and the dialogue is from this conversation that jesse and played by ethan hawk and celine played by julie Del- delpy is um are having and he says maybe um that having this conversation about feminism and uh, this is what comes up i think i'm going a little too fast for the audience but let me know what you think about this and uh i know i never bought this book because i thought i never bought this book even though i saw it again and again on amazon because i thought hey i've already seen the movie what's the big point why should i actually invest in another f- screenplay of sorts what will become of this anyway but um i think this has been one of the best decisions because you kind of slow down pause and you get to picture the film in your own way and this is something then that i would recommend to everyone before sunrise and before sunset i also think that um one of the many reasons why i'm not able to finish the book is because uh finish reading any books is because there are so many books that i'm reading at the same time i never used to do that and i started doing this only recently which was 2 to 3 years ago and now when i look back i think the best solution is to go back to one to two books i think it's not working well for me and ever since i've just started focusing on one to two books my speed has increased a lot um <laughs> nice any fantasy books that i've read recently guys do you have any fantasy um book recommendations for lok ranjan here list them down in the comments i don't read a lot of fantasy although i should um but one fiction slash fantasy i'm not sure if it's fantasy that i've been reading recently is haroon and the sea of stories which is by salman rushdi a friend gifted it to me and i think it's it's delightful <laughs> i was very angry when i got this as a gift because i was like yeah, i've already gotten so many books i haven't read and here is another book that now i have to finish reading or this book that i need to focus on so much pressure but um haroon and the sea of stories is turning out really well it's sort of an adventure novel and it's a story of a father and son and uh, the determination of the son to rescue the father and gift him return him a gift um and there are so many characters that you'll come across who are absolutely delightful before trilogy i'm going to address before we move on to this book i'm going to address another comment which is about before trilogy this is by shantanu uh before trilogy is an exceptionally beautiful movie to have a book where you can read those dialogues from them which you can hold on to would be really beautiful somehow makes it more meaningful yes and um for everyone who's watching i'll just show you something that's very 41 people are watching us nice guys do like the stream please uh for those of you who are watching So my sibling gifted it to me and um 
the the obviously there is something that he's written on the first page he initially wrote happy birthday and then cut it out very beautifully to say happy rakhi <laughs> and then you have the leaning tower of pani i don't know this is a passport sized photograph i got from from i don't know a couple of years ago and best notes featuring my sibling but yes um i think that's the beauty beauty of the screenplay there are so many lovely dialogues that you can actually go back to and reread and this time you can slow down and follow the pace that you want to and uh, that is something that's beautiful about the book the next book that i want to talk about is harun and uh, okay give me one second the next book that i want to talk about is harun and the sea of stories now when i wrote this banner i thought they would come down like i see them in the book but anyway so this is the dedication of the book and uh, the context is when rashti was exiled he wrote this book for his son and uh, the dedication therefore follows through this is how the dedication goes and this is what you're seeing on screen I'm trying what's up this is bad i'll have to cut down the portrait which i am going to do in a second yes now you can see it it says zem so now when you look at this it says zafar z a f a r and uh, this is the name of his son and this is what he's writing for him zemla zenda zanadu all our dream worlds may come true fairy lands are fearsome too as i wander far from view read and bring me home to you and um, this is one of my most beautiful dedications now <laughs> um and i think this book also has one of the most beautiful startings and this is going to be one of my first this is going to be my first point like yeah first rush the in a way and uh, i'm very excited about it because until now i've only read excerpts and uh, small um short reads nothing extensive and this has so far excited me so much so the book starts like this there was once in the country of alif bey a sad city and then he goes into defining how sad it is a sad city the saddest of cities a city so ruinously sad that it had forgotten its name it stood by a mournful sea full of glumfish which was so miserable to eat that they made people belch with melancholy even though the skies were blue in the north of the sad sea in the north of the sad city stood mighty factories in which so i'm told sadness was actually manufactured packaged and sent all over the world which never seemed to get enough of it black smoke poured out of the city poured out of the chimneys of the sadness factories and hung over the city like bad news and the way he describes everything you can say a city is very sad but then he goes into like oh it was so sad that it even had fish that would make you belch with melancholy and i think that is something that i really really love about harun and the sea of stories and this is the book that i've been reading before i go to bed every day and it hasn't been disappointing me so far and i think that's why i also look forward to going to bed early because i really want to go back to the book uh, but yes um, this is a beautiful book i hope i finish it though <laughs> um hey 
Hey, this is sweet. Sharbari has, I hope that's the correct pronunciation. Uh, I picked up M in the big home because of you and I'm loving it. Hey, nice. Thank you so much, Sharbari. Whoa, okay, Shweta. These are such beautiful lines. It is. And I think, um, I just, I, this is a book that won't disappoint. And I, there are a few authors which are on my list and I'm kind of, I am rather embarrassed because I haven't read them until now, even though their grandness is so huge that everyone talks about them and every one has read them. And Salman Rushdie was one of them. And now that I've finally started reading his book, I just feel obviously awful that I'm coming to this super late, but I also feel amazing that, hey, finally I'm picking this up and it's absolutely beautiful. The last time I felt like this was when I picked up, when I really deep dived into Aga Shahid Ali. And I know when I go back to Amitabh Ghosh, I will feel the same. And uh, that's that. What does NGL mean? Just reading Sherlock Holmes. Nice. I really um, like, used to like Sherlock Holmes at one point. Like um, mystery and adventure was everything that I would read about. And that is what I read while growing up. I picked up How to Stay Sane recently. Ooh. So, guys, <laughs> in case you follow my newsletters, uh, I'm pretty certain Manik got this as a recommendation on uh, Amazon, I think. But in case you do not follow my newsletter, but in case you had, you would have received this recommendation last week or perhaps the week before. I can't remember what newsletter I put it in. But um, I want to take this moment to talk about my newsletter. I send this out on every Monday. It's called Monday Blues. I mean, the name keeps on changing because I'm experimenting with it. But I think for now, it's going to be Monday Blues because for some reason, I really like it. Um, now, um, The newsletter is starts with obviously a summary of my week, which I try not to deep dive into. But then it also talks about a certain book or book I've gone back to, book or books that I've gone back to. And uh, for those of you who respond, so the last newsletter that I sent was I am not cool. That is what the subject line was. And thank you for everyone. Um, thank you to everyone who responded on the newsletter. I am currently... Uh, I was surprised by the amount of response, amount of emails that came in because of the newsletter. And I'm in the process of writing back to everyone, but I'm sorry if it's taking time because there were a lot of people who wrote back and I'm very slow with that. But thank you so much, guys. Um, and for those of you who haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Uh, check this out for a couple of weeks. I'll be sending out new newsletters every Monday. There is uh, Anushka from our team who's been doing some amazing work when it comes to newsletters. She's been sending good news of the week. And there are more newsletter campaigns that are coming out. And uh, if you do not like it, then you can always unsubscribe. But please try subscribing also. Um, the link to the newsletter is in... The description box below so please consider subscribing or make your friends subscribe i should also start posting about it on other social media platforms but i don't which is why i'm uh not so smart but uh i'll be posting more about it and please uh consider subscribing to it and check it out and then if you don't like it you can always unsubscribe but uh also thank you for everyone who's been writing back after every newsletter it means a lot pushes me to show up every Monday and write about it. Write more. Mm. The next book now that I want to talk about is Woe is I. I do not have any quote from this book because I'm still, like, I just pick it up randomly from anywhere. Now, this is a book about, um, the book is very witty, A. 
and it is about the gramopho gramophobes guide to better english in plain english so uh, this is a book about grammar but it's also very witty and the way she talks about it is obviously i, I for some reason i'm falling short of words uh so the author of the book is patricia t o'connor and she combines her sense of humor and tells you what is grammatically correct and what is grammatically incorrect so i think everyone is going to like reading about it if you are someone who's a grammar phobe or if you are someone who really really uh, is a grammar nazi <laughs> um there are chapters dedicated to every every thing you can think of pronouns therapy for pronoun for pronoun anxiety blunders with numbers it is it's just nice um the chapter name is well the possessives and the possessed they beg to disagree putting verbs in their place then there is verbal abuse which is about no nos yeses and maybes spell bound how to be letter perfect so to speak talking points on pronunciation and then you have comma sutra which is the joy of punctuation and then you have the complete dangler a fish out of water and then you have death sentence to clichés deserve to die uh the living dead let bygones rules be gone saying is believing how to write what you mean and uh these were just the name of the chapters so if you liked the sense of human there you will actually really like who is i and now one of our godfathers is here kushal kushal has asked if there is any update on the christmas book sharing hi kushal so this is something very interesting that we're doing for our patrons uh particularly the members of the book club so if you would want to sign up there are still a couple of days the link is in the description box you can sign up as a patron and uh, there's going to be a form that will come out super soon in the book club and um the secret santa is going to happen so everyone is going to gift each other books depends we're figuring out who this uh, who the uh coordinator of this activity is going to be but yes we will be doing that okay so yes this book is is rather intriguing and guys please subscribe to kitabi cabins and the newsletter the link to the newsletter is mentioned below also um now that i've recommended the books i want to talk about why can i not finish reading the book which i should have done ideally in the first few minutes but um everyone in the chat by a show of hands and also comments what's where do you struggle with finishing books and i will also go first um i think i really i cracked why i am not able to finish reading books because there are just so many options that i tend to leave one and move on to the next one super quickly and sometimes more often than not certain books can not just retain my attention and i don't know if it happens to everyone i'll be reading okay this has also been happening with school of life it's a great book but each page is every page is so heavy that i need a break and i go to the other book so now i know that a good balance is reading one heavy book and then having something that you can turn to when things go south with the first book anjit has said netflix how many of you struggle with that uh, and um, i think i could have said that but um so this is what i've done in my phone i've removed all the apps i think there is just hotstar because there is a lot of sports that comes on the channel and uh, when formula 1 was happening i just needed hotstar in my phone because i would watch it every time i would travel and so on but now i've removed every app from my phone because i only use my laptop or a bigger screen to watch the tv shows etc then you have the neta that's a very interesting name by the way uh, <laughs> the neta there isn't enough pictures in the books i'm not sure if that should be one of the things that governs 
uh, what you yeah I mean, but yeah it does sometimes it's just so nice to have pictures in books I was reading a book and my brother recommended me another book and I moved on to that I have six books partially read so I so I don't know how you guys um, arrange your libraries this is how I arrange them okay now this one over here okay you can't see the top one but over here the last one that you see here those are um, this one those are poetry and mostly poetry right now this one and then you have another section for autobiographies biographies memoirs and then you have one for fiction and then short stories plays and everything and then you have the topmost layer where i have mostly the books that i finished reading or the ones that i'll never read the ones i can give to people and then they have this section this section is a collection of books that i have read i'm reading i'm yet to finish them and everything lust for life is one of them which was one of the book of months. So, I can't underline it. Um, but you have Manto, you have Tribe of Mentors, you have Blue Lotus, I have Sylvia. Sylvia Plath is one book that I'm not able to finish because it's so heavy. Uh, kudos to the people who are able to make it through. And there are so many books here. And then there are books here as well, which I'm currently reading. And I just, I've decided I'm not going to buy any more books until and unless I finish all of them. Okay. I have been reading three books by myself. Everyone relates to this. I have been reading three books by myself, but they are all different in their genres, but seem good to have something to read as per my day and mood. Right. But then there comes a time when you are just not able to finish reading them. When a book becomes preachy, I guess. Oh yeah, I do that as well. I've cracked the thing for preachy books. I've started making notes in the margins of the books. And if it's too preachy, I'll give my three cents and move on. So that's what I do. If I'm not able to complete a book in one go, as in multiple sittings, and then I try to go back to it, I feel like I need to reread whatever I've read. And that is a daunting task in me. Shweta, I used to do that. Now I just skim immediately and I move on. Uh, she bought... <laughs> Yeah. No, I did not though. I think the only... Okay, I did. I bought this book recently, which is very interesting, but I don't know where it is. Should be somewhere here. It's about the secret life of the trees. Very interesting. I got this because that particular day I was feeling very lonely. And I realized the only people sometimes that I talk to genuinely with absolute interest are the plants in my room and my balcony. And it just felt nice that, hey, they might have a life of their own and I could feel I could be privy to their conversation. But just one of those days. English is, oh. Once you start practicing Arnav, I think you will also get used to it. But yes. Dostoevsky's fans in the chat. Are there any Dostoevsky fans in the chat? I, yeah. What are the books that everyone is currently reading? Murakami could make it possible. What could, I'm sorry, I do not understand. Murakami could make it possible for me. Um, stop buying the books. What? Um... There's um, Akshu in the chat. If anybody has any recommendation for Akshu Opi, please go on. School of life and how to stay sane. That's a wonderful recommendation. I would recommend how to stay sane as well. I've read bits of it and I think it's absolutely wonderful. Ooh. Thank you so much, Nikhil. I'm so glad she liked it. Uh, I know a few people who have been reading Quiet and that has been very exciting because everyone comes back and says the same thing. So I'm super proud of the recommendation. To kill a mockingbird and sapiens both at the same time. 100 years of solitude. Wow. To kill a mockingbird and sapiens. Nice bunny. 
Uh, Jerry is reading 100 Years of Solitude. On the secret life of trees, you thought of wanting to be a part of the conversation. And what? Oh, yeah. Someone's reading the Holy Bible. Neta is reading the Holy Bible. Nice. Hey, is it nice, Kushal? Kushal, please let us know if it is. I also want to pick that up. Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. That is such an interesting... Um, I've heard a lot about this book. Lying by Sam Harris. Oh, nice. Hey, nice, Shweta. I'm so glad you liked it. Blink. Shantanu is reading Blink, which is a great book. Selected works of Khalil Gibran. One really... Um, so I've only read The Prophet by now and a few things here and there. Like the thing that I've read end to end is The Prophet. Apart from that, only snippets. And I really liked the last chapter, which is about the farewell. We shall build a tower in the sky. And Atomic Habits, of course, nice. Somebody is reading uh, Current Read, Deep Work. Nice. Mm. Sherlock Holmes is exception. Nice. The sheep are the unseen words. Become the shepherd. I'm not sure I understand this. Oh, good question. Uh, have I tried video? Video as in movies, music, and audiobooks, ebooks? I'm not sure if I understand your comment fully, Ayush. Games is mediums. Oh, sorry. There's another follow-up text. I mean, I have. It's just I personally find joy in books. So that is my usually most preferred medium. And Naira is reading Anna Karina. Read a poem by Legendary. Oh, <laughs> nice. I'm done with Ram and Sita in the series. They were good. Oh, nice. That's very kind of you, Daneta. I really, really hope one day we'll <laughs> oh, I would be able to do that. I'm currently reading two novels and one fiction. Hi, Nand Kumar. I we met in the Bangalore uh Meet up, right? I mean, I could be wrong, but yeah. Since I can't finish any of those, I've started reading a small short story collection. Nice. What short story collection are you reading, though? Please consider reading some of Girish Karnad's plays. My favorite ones are Nagamandala and Tughlaq. Oh, yes. Shantanu. My thoughts on Sudha Murthy, I think she's phenomenal. I, I haven't bought her books and read them. I usually read them at the store. I'm not sure why I haven't done that. Maybe because there are so many books that I'm yet to finish. But I really like her. I mean, I usually spend a lot of my time at the children's section for... Because I just think... Um, there's so much to learn about communication from all the children's books. About things that we feel are so difficult to confront on... But children's books do those so easily. You talk about grief. You talk about um, love. You talk about the depth of love. You talk about so many things. And I, with Sudha Murthy, I think, um, yes, you're right. She's not necessary. She's, I think she's a feminist, as in she wants equal rights for everyone. But definitely, it's not a very, um, her agenda is not in your face. And that is something I really, really like about her. Oh, we could also do this. But no, I like this. Her interview with Twinkle Khanna is fire. Yes. Oh, yes. Be not defeated by the rain. I have read the poem, but I just cannot remember it right now. Uh, be not be defeated. Be not be defeated by the rain. Wait, let me just confirm if it's the same. Oh, no, I haven't read this one. Sorry. 
<laughs> have I read Black Beauty, the one about the horse? Yeah, I have. But this is nice, guys. Have you guys been reading any poetry books as well? Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. I, I went to the bookstore and I saw Neil Gaiman's books this time, but I'm not going to buy any book until next year. That is something I've made up my mind on. But yeah, I'd also like to know if you guys have been up to any poetry reading, etc, etc. I've gone back to finishing. Okay. I've gone back to Manan Kapoor's um, A Map of Longings, which is the life and works of Aga Shahid Ali. So I've gone back to this one and I might finish it in another week or so and I plan to finish it super soon so that I can get back to Aga Shahid Ali again and read his poetry with a new perspective. I'm reading Malayalam short story collection Up One by S. Harish. Nice. On the Road and Memoir of a Forensic Surgeon. Oh, that's that's interesting. Uh, what's the name of the memoir by a forensic surgeon? Uh, isn't Cold Blood as a fan of modern mysteries? A. Krishna Srikar. Wow. You know, I haven't read any thriller or mysteries in a long time. Does anyone else feel overwhelmed by the amount of books they have and they haven't read? Because that is what is happening to me recently. <laughs> and then I also know in my head I have to read this book and this book and that book and I just can't buy it. <laughs> nice. I'm reading Madhushala. Oh, nice. Love poems. but Hey, I don't... I think I've either... No, I don't think I have. But I mean, I could. I don't know. Uh, this is nice. Arundhati Subramanian. I think I've, I have read this one. I mean, I, at least I know of the book, but I don't know. Hey, thank you, Ankit. That's so sweet. And Kamla Das. Let's say mid of next year. Are there any underliners here? I was dedicated to the challenge, but left. So I couldn't finish a few books that we picked up. But yes. Do you guys want to take a wild, wild guess what the book for next month will be? Books are too expensive. What? No, they're not expensive. I mean, depends. I mean, um, Jerry Pinto said this amazing thing where he was like, hey, are you going to get, are you going to go to the cafe and order 500 rupees coffee? Or you would, I mean, you could use that money and spend it on a book. So, mm. or you can always go to a library. So many books to read, so little time. True. Huh. I'm just reading the comments. Um, but yes, Manik is in the same boat. But it's becoming overwhelming now. True. Books are a portal to alternate reality. Very cheap. True. Oh yes, DJ is right. Go to the Darya Gunj Sunday market. Yeah. <laughs> last time I visited Delhi, last year around this time, I might be in Delhi actually in a few weeks. But last time I visited Delhi, um, I had bought good five kilos of books or more from Darya Ganj. And I just, I'm not going to do the same thing again. How to build book reading habit. Dedicate a given, okay, there are a lot of books A on Chalchitra Talks. There are a lot of videos on this topic on Chalchitra Talks. And B, dedicate a given time in a day to a book and show up every day. It's like a date. You need to show up. Do I book, buy every book I want to read or sometimes choose to issue from the library? I don't have access to any library now. So, I mean, there used to be Z library, which is now closed. But um, right now I'm focusing on all the books that I have. Usually I buy most of the books if I know I'm going to read it. 
currently reading verity by his cool i don't know how to pronounce her name or his name but is um colleen who were actually um are the books really nice because i've heard so much about them but i don't want to pick up anything that's very contemporary because i usually feel very guilty about reading them for some reason but i'm moving fast because i felt so good after reading evelyn hugo <laughs> if you come to delhi please visit the sahitya academy oh nice i'll just note it down somewhere sahitya academy library sometimes i'm very um concerned because usually they don't allow you access but let's see but anyway this has been amazing guys i think like streaming on sunday afternoon is the way to go but um this has been amazing i'll take your leave now guys and i hope you like the recommendations i shared at the beginning of this video um why can i not finish a book why can i not finish reading but these were my recommendations in case you're struggling with the same and uh, there's also this video that's going to come out super soon on the channel i'm not sure when uh the moment our editors go ahead with this and give it a hari jhandi it'll be out but it's a very interesting uh video that's filmed across himachal and different locations and i hope you like it and uh i will see you guys super soon and let me know which book is your favorite